Hey, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today I'm going to show you how to export B track outs with effects in Studio One. So last week we discussed my brand new beat production and mixing workflow and if you missed that video then I'm gonna link it up top for you here just so you can get the full story. But the gist of it was that I've recently changed the way that I export my beat track outs when sending to an artist or to an engineer. Before I used to take off all of my plugins before exporting but after having some conversations with mixing engineers I now export all of my track outs with the effects baked in. Also I've started to differentiate between plugins that might be used for sound design and plugins that might be used for actual mixing. Again, if you wanna understand more about this change or just my stance on the whole thing, then definitely make sure to watch that first video. In any case, this week I promised you that I would walk you through how to export your track outs in Studio One with effects. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so jumping into Studio One here, I have a beat pool dub that I have already finished creating and arranging. So I'll be using this for the remainder of the video to show you how to do this. Okay, so first let me show you my mixer. Now, as you can see here, I have some effects that I've used to sculpt my sounds. Maybe they were EQs or reverbs or whatever else. The question we're trying to answer today is how can I export these sounds with these effects baked in? Now, for some contrast, what I was doing before when I was not exporting with effects was highlighting everything, merging everything together so they're all single tracks, and then on my Mac hitting Command plus B. This basically bounced the audio in place, meaning that if it was a MIDI file, it would convert it to an audio file, and if it was already an audio file, then it would pretty much consolidate any cuts and fades and turn it into a brand new audio file. Now, the other thing this feature also did was automatically place all of your bounces into a bounces folder within your beat session that I would then title trackouts. The problem, however, is that the bounce selection or bounce in place option only includes any modifications done to the audio in the timeline here. It does not include any plugins you might have added to the channel for that track. But okay, to export your track outs with effects, one of the first things I like to do is to set my faders back up to zero. Now, usually as I'm producing, I'll do some slight leveling just to get an idea of what the beat would sound like. But when it comes time to export, I do like to bring these back up to Unity. Now, this is subjective. So at the end of the day, it's up to you. The only thing that really matters is to make sure you don't go into the red and clip because that's lost information we can't get back. But in any case, for me, I'm gonna hover over these faders and in Mac, the easiest way to do this is to hold command and then click on a fader and that'll bring it up to Unity here. So I'm gonna do these for all of my tracks and for the master fader as well if you did anything to it. So there it is. And then also make sure, I also make sure that all my, my panning knobs are dead center. Finally, you wanna set a boundary for the selection and there's basically two ways to do this. Option number one is to use the loop tool here and then pretty much use it to set the start and end points to match the start and end of your beat. So you would basically take this loop selector here and then make sure that the start is at the beginning of your beat and at the end, is at the end of your beat. Pro tip here though, for the end, always make sure that you go a few measures past the actual end of your beat. You wanna do this because some effects like reverbs have tails baked in, and you wanna make sure that your track outs get printed with those tails so things don't just end abruptly. And then ultimately that way, whoever gets this session later, whether that be you or another engineer, can fade things out nicely. Now, the second way to do this is to use the start and end song markers. So those you will actually find by first enabling the marker track, which you can activate by pressing this button on the top left here, the one that looks like a flag. Once you do that, you will get this additional track up top along with some default start and end marker flag. So mine's there and the end one is over here. Side note, you could also use this little plus button here to add more markers and use them for whatever you want. But anyway, the procedure for this is the same as with the loop selector. You wanna set the start marker at the beginning of your beat and the end marker a few measures out after your beat actually ends. But okay, once you have that done, you wanna to go to the top to where it says song here on the menu, drop that down and hit export stems. Now, technically stems and track outs are not the same thing, but I know a lot of people call their track out stems, so I guess Presonus here took the modern approach. But just know that if you see stems in Studio One, it means track outs. Anyway, once you do that, you'll be presented with this pop-up window, and here you wanna do a couple things. First, make sure that you're on channels and not tracks. If you leave it on tracks, it will do basically the same thing as the bounce selection or bounce in place feature, and we don't want that. So again, 
make sure that this is on channel so you can include any plugins. From here, just select any channels you want to export by clicking them in or out. And I'm gonna do this with you in real time as well. So I'm gonna uncheck everything first to make it easy for me because I only want what I see here on my timeline. So I got pad, I'm gonna skip the scaler because that's a utility tool. So we got pad, then we got lead, keys, uh, pluck base. I got a kick snare open hat, uh, kick snare open hat. Then we have a close hat crash, close hat crash. And it looks like I had two more perks here on track seven and eight, which were a couple more hats. So that's good to go for me. Now, huge pro tip here, and hopefully one that you're already doing, but please make sure to be naming your tracks appropriately. For one, it keeps your session neat and organized, but two, it'll also help you see things easier here when it's time to select what tracks you wanna import, and not to mention that whoever gets this track after you will thank you enormously. Now, an important thing to note here as well is that in this section, you will also have the ability to select and export any buses. So if you have processing that you did on a group of tracks and you wanna export that, or if you have an effects bus that you are using for parallel processing, then you can select like those here as well. Now, I don't have any buses in this session, but for the sake of a demo, let me just go back here and add a few. So let me go back over to my mixer and let's pretend that I wanted a bus for all my drums. Maybe I was processing them together. So let me select them all, right click, add bus for selected channels, and then we'll just rename this to drums. We'll add any plugin in here, doesn't really matter. And then we'll also add an effects bus. So maybe I had one for reverb. I was doing some parallel processing. We'll label this here and then add any reverb. Boom, there it is. So if I go back to this export screen here, you can see that if I go back to this section where it says sources and I scroll all the way down, I'm going to find that reverb effects bus and that drums bus that I just created. Now I actually don't want to export these, so I'm just gonna uncheck them, but just know that if you wanted to, if you wanted to export effects from buses, you totally could. In any case, once you have your channel selected, go to the middle section here and let's select your location. Now the way to select your location is super simple. Just click on these three little dots here and then select where you want it to go. My advice is to create a brand new folder within your beat folder or beat session and call that track outs. So then that is exactly what I'm about to do. This is my beat session folder. I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna call this track outs. From here, hit open and you're good to go. In this section, you also have the ability to add a prefix to all of your export files. And by default, it'll always be the name of your beat, but you can change this to whatever you want. So the way that it works, if you do use this, is that it'll be the prefix, underscore, and then the name of the track that you designated on the timeline. Now there's a bunch of ways to use the prefix feature, but one of my favorites is to add a category to your tracks. So for example, let's say I was exporting only my drums. Then let me just uncheck this real quick. So it's only my drums. Then I'm gonna change the prefix to drums. And when I export the way that it would look, it would be drums underscore kick or drums underscore snare. Again, this is just a really great way to keep your session organized. Below this, you also have publishing, and I always skip this because I never really use it, but you do have the option to send to Notion or also to upload to SoundCloud if that's something you wanna do. Finally, at the very bottom here, you also have the format selector, and you can do whatever you wanna do here, but for the best quality trackouts, I always do WAV file, 24 bit on resolution and then 48 kilohertz for the sample rate. By the way, I've gotten a few emails from a couple of you who are really detail oriented and have noticed that I do my sessions in 48 instead of 441. And to be quite honest with you, the only reason I do this is because that is the recommended sample rate for video. There is some evidence to point out how 48 gives you better headroom and quality, but if I'm being 100% honest with you, the only reason I do 448 instead of 441 is that at some point, I know that music is going to be paired with a video, whether that is a music video for an artist or a vlog on YouTube, or maybe just a commercial. So if that's the case, then you might as well just export with the appropriate sample rate from the beginning. Again, this is just my preference. You can do whatever you choose to do. But okay, from here, move on to the export range on the top right here and select either between loop or between song, start and end marker, depending on what method you chose in the beginning. Finally, the last section here at the bottom is the option section, and you can mess with these if you want, but the ones that I always leave on that I recommend you do as well is preserve mono tracks, 
write tempo to audio files, and then close after export. But okay, for this specific session, I really don't want a prefix. And let me just re-add all of my melodic instruments back in. But once you have this looking the way that you want to, then hit okay and let the software do its thing. Once it's done, you're gonna find that those trackouts are gonna be wherever you selected for the export location. In my specific case, they were inside a specific folder in my beat session that I call trackouts, and here they are. And there you have it. That is how you export your trackouts in Studio One with effects. Now, hopefully after watching this, you feel more comfortable doing this, but this was, at the end of the day, a process reserved for after you finish a beat. What happens if you don't have a beat to export? So to help you create more, and as a thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end, I've created, I've built a little producer care package called the Producer Toolkit, and I wanna give it to you completely for free. The kit includes some sample loops along with some MIDI scales and MIDI chords to help you with your production. And again, you can get that completely for free by clicking the first link in the description. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, then let me know by leaving a comment down below. But as always, like this video if you like to subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.